Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Breeding Ground, NYC, here in Brooklyn, New York. As you know, here on the Pace Report, I like to expose and also break out a lot of new and important talent that's going to really, really make waves here in the industry. And tonight is no exception. Vocalist Sarah MK tonight is making her New York City and United States debut here at the Breeding Ground, NYC. And she hails from Montreal, Canada, and what's very unique and very different about this sister is one, she fuses both soul, hip-hop, and jazz in her music. Tonight, we're going to sit down and talk about her brand new EP, I call it this album because it's more than five songs. And we're going to talk about her upbringing in Canada, how she got exposed to soul music as well as jazz. And we also talk about her becoming a teacher. She's also in Montreal teaching jazz to students, as well as talk about her being an independent artist and how she's able to bring her unique blend of music to the masses. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the debut here at the Breeding Ground NYC here in Brooklyn of Sarah M.K. This is your introduction to the music world. This is an EP that you put out, you executive produced, and it seems like people are now getting ready to find out who you really are with this project. Yeah, um, yeah, first EP, just, you know, putting my heart and soul into it and uh, hope that the response will be positive. You know, I, I, I don't want to call it an EP because I think any time you put out a project that has more than five or six songs that's really called an album yeah um i think we called it an ep because we had in mind to do four or five songs and it ended up being nine songs um but it, it's really the introduction i think for the album itself i have bigger goals in mind bigger you know bigger imagery of, of what i want it to be so we still call it we call it a long ep it's a new thing it's a new format <laughs> Well, I mean, that's innovative. That, that is. Yeah. And this album, <laughs> this album, you go everywhere. I mean, there's jazz, there's soul, there's hip hop. I mean, you call it neo soul, I call it soul. Why is it that you decided to go and mesh all of these instead of going with the traditional neo soul? Um, well, I, I come from, uh, I mean, when I first started singing and, and stuff, I was really pop oriented, actually. So there's that influence. Then I did a lot of hip-hop dancing. So then the hip-hop influence with the rap kind of came through that. And uh, I'm currently a jazz vocal student in Montreal. So there's still that kind of aspect. And I found, you know, Neo Soul is, is the right blend of all those styles together. Um, but I guess it's a new Neo Soul with, with all those flavors just a little more, you know, reinforced. Um, I, I really try to make it a point of 
of kind of pushing the boundaries here and there and maybe mixing things that people will be like, that doesn't go together, or, you know. You know, this is also, we talked earlier, this is your indoctrination or your foray into the United States. Mm -hmm. He has very excited. Tell me why so long, because you've been doing this for a while in your native Montreal, but now you decided to just take a chance and come here and spread your wings. Mm -hmm. um, well, I actually had a, a beautiful opportunity with a friend of mine called Tariq Khan, who actually owns the Breeding Ground Studios, um, who invited us not too long ago, about two weeks ago, and said, do you want to come down and do a recording? And uh, with the jazz festival coming up, you know, it was just a beautiful opportunity. So definitely owe a lot to the Breeding Ground Studios for inviting me here. <laughs> Let's go into this whole project. Um, even some of the songs that you write are very personal, like Should Have Part 1 and Should Have Part 2. And then you go into raps like Just Friends and Ain't Heard It Yet. I mean, it's like this really is kind of like you said earlier, an introduction to who you are. And you are saying a lot. Yeah. Um you know, every song I write comes from personal experience or, or something I've heard through friends. And I just try to have a, an album, a, a long EP that was well balanced with uh, those, those themes. But it really comes from a personal aspect, absolutely. Tell me about the process of writing. How do you go about writing? Because your producer seemed like he really understood what you were trying to do with yeah. this. Um, well, for for this record, we went um, with his music. So he would have, uh, he had some produced tracks, some instrumentals, and then uh, I took them in and, and wrote, you know, accordingly to the music uh, and what it evoked in me. Um, but I, I've, I do a lot of writing also on the side. I'm also in this improv group called Community where uh, every week we need to bring in some new themes, some new lyrical themes. And, and you know, so it's kind of like picking from that and then developing it with the music. Because his music, Jordan Peters' music, is very specific in chord progressions and, and melodies and stuff. So um, it's not necessarily something I can just take some lyrics that I wrote before from a previous song and just apply it. I have to, we have to be really specific where, where the music is going, the chord progressions are going. Um, so, so that's been the writing uh, progression for process, sorry, for that. You know, when I heard your disc, it kind of takes me back to, your lyrical style reminds me a lot of Lauryn Hill meets Jean Grey, but your, your vocal, you, you, you're infusing something. You have a beautiful, beautiful spirit in your voice. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> That's a very strong comment, Lauren Hill and Jean Grey. Those are two artists that I really admire, especially Jean Grey as an MC. Um, I really like her honesty. I think honesty is very important in an artist. 
and no matter how you express it, it might have a big, thick voice or you know, a, a you know more soft voice. It's all about that honesty that we're trying to, that I'm trying to, to pass through as much as possible. What have you seen as far as hip hop, as far as the MCs? Because you know there is here in the states. I don't know what it is like in in, in Montreal and Canada, but there are no female MCs mm -hmm. and. The ones who are out, I'm just, and I'm, I'm not putting my bias in, I'm just being brutally honest. They're not talking about anything. Mm -hmm. um, in Montreal, we have uh, some really great female MCs, but on, on the bigger scheme of things, it's about the same thing as here. Um, you know, I think, I think girls or female MCs are caught up in the image a little too much and, and are being... Uh, you know, masculinized, like, I mean, the men are telling them how to be female MCs, and it just comes off as not, it's not a, a, a great reflection of uh, most women. Um, but yeah, I, in, in Montreal, that's the same game right now, you know, so... Tell me about your beginnings in Montreal. Uh, I mean, the music scene is a little different than it is here in the States, but it seems like you have a very, very, very diverse and very eclectic mix growing up. Mm -hmm. um, the Montreal scene is very, very vibrant. It's more underground, um, but, you know, you have a very strong um, indie uh indie music scene in Montreal, so there's a lot of electronic and, and experimental music going on. And on the soul uh, soul section of things, um, there's great collectives, once again, like Community, where we do improv, and then that's a great collective to meet, you know, MCs and, and poets and, and singers and dancers, so there's a an influence from every side, but, you know, uh, and a lot of world music, too, because we have a lot of... Uh, you know, people from, from different countries, especially Haitian. So Haitian music is very strong in Montreal. Um, but the music from the States is one of the biggest influences I think we have in in the, the Montreal city. What does hip-hop mean to you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, expression. St real expression. What does soul music mean to you? Hmm frequencies and vibrations and colors. What does jazz music mean to you? Never ending, never ending search for quality and for expression and for true honesty. Shout out to it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Breeding Ground NYC here in Brooklyn, New York. I'd like to personally thank Ms. Sarah MK for her time, as well as the staff and management here at the Breeding Ground NYC. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, 
It'll make you move. Till next time, peace.